Greetings and welcome to the One Six Scale Man. Probably presents you know what it is Sunday Fun Day here at Collectors Lounge International. Um, I am half sleep still because I didn't go to bed until late and I'm tired, but at the same time, I am happy to be here and happy to be here with you guys. We're going to have an incredible show today. Shane's not here today. Shane is actually away on a ski trip. You know, that's what he does. That's his thing. Rich is away. It's family time. You know, of course, we won't be seeing Cam back here for a minute. He will be back and forth, like, eventually once, you know, he's, you know, again, newborn baby girl. You got to spend time, man, do what you got to do. But, um, yeah, so we'll we'll have everybody, everybody back. But I took this opportunity uh, to bring, you know, two of the coolest cats out there right now that I think they are killing it um you know in the community when it comes to figure photography um and i just want to kind of talk with them and you know just kind of get like just into their world of how they approach it um you know just dynamics in general um angles like how they actually capture the idea um we know that you know when it comes to figure photography like i said you have to, it starts with the idea how to execute that idea isn't always you know it doesn't always happen but they tend to do it effortlessly. And um, I want to kind of bring them in and kind of talk about it. And um, yeah, I'm so happy about it. And then again, thank you guys for being here this Sunday. I know it's Super Bowl Sunday. Some people are boycotting. Some people don't really care for me. I'm just watching for the trailers because my team is not there. Who do I think will win? Hmm, I don't know. I'm Aaron more sided Eagles. I don't know. You guys tell me out there what you guys think. But again, um, I'm just here for the trailers that's it let's go i want to watch the trailers last of us came on friday night so i got a chance to watch that and yeah um and actually both these both guests actually put me on to a new show you that i want to probably actually start binging and watching pretty soon so we'll talk about that again but again so glad to have these guys here with us so let me just bring them in what is going on such an amazing panel we got nick the trick in the building my guy all camera tricks that is camera tricks and then we also got kiko in the building um, thank you guys for being here. How you doing? How you doing? I'm doing all right. You know, I'm happy to be here. I was shocked that you uh, invited me to be here, especially with Kiko. Um, but um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. I think it's gonna be a fun time. I'm excited. I'm not watching no Super Bowl, so you know. I have to put <laughs> That's, what <I'm> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> he said I'm not watching it. Well, I mean, hey, I'm just watching for the. But but what Kiko does. You did raise a, a very good point, bro. Um, internet so you could just watch it on the internet so i didn't even know that i honestly felt like this was an olive branch from you to say like look my man is hurting today i, I just need to spend some time with him i don't want him to be left alone you know because as i said i'm not watching the scripted bowl today yeah, yeah, yeah. i will never forget where i was i was in mexico actually watching mm -hmm. the bengals chiefs game yeah. or show if you want to call it that uh -huh. absolutely abysmal um uh -huh. so i can't uh -huh. wait to see what uh what goodell cooked up in the in the drawing room board today for how this trip <laughs> ends tonight but thanks yeah. for having me man it's good to be able to just sit here and stream with y'all so definitely what man. Up? it's so good to have you here man and, and both of you guys uh you know who are doing some incredible work um in the community um for those if you've actually saw the thumbnail i pulled pictures like well some of my favorite choices and put them up there so you can actually take a look at them um, so you know exactly what this story, what this, what today is going to entail. So definitely, I'm going to actually address the chat real quick. We got Thule in the building. Thank you for being here, as always. We got another cat out there, Figure Asset Park, who is incredible with his photo, his photography, bro. Uh, I don't know if you've seen his work. You probably seen his his work on Figure Flex Friday. Yeah, he yeah. kills it. Oh my God, bro, he kills it. His interpretation, like he does, like some really dope mashups. Uh, so I love what he does, man. Shout out to my man, uh, Figure Asset Park. We got Shiny Shiny in the building. Big Dog Pound One is in the building. Thank you for being here. We got also another uh, fellow photographer. We got um, H Green in the building. He also does some incredible work, um, as always. Um, really good with angles, outside shots, and stuff like that, just bringing it to life. Uh, we got, uh, let me see here, William Owens. We got, e, who's that? I can't even pronounce the name. E2 Lip. P. Lampi in the building. Thank you for being here. I hope I pronounced your name right. We got effort. um, yeah, good effort, right? We got one man forty two in the building. Thank you for being here. OG fan with Star Wars, but just Star Wars. Yes, my bro. Thank you for being here. Uh, we got Polo eighty nine in the building. Key goes out there as well. We got Mark Mitchell in the building. Thank you for being here. We got Defect. 
Uh, who else we got? Larry Walker is out there with us. We got fourth Mr. E in the building. Thank you for being here, man. As always, my bro, uh, Calvin, a.k.a. Low-Key Collector, the Penny Dropper, Draws Dropper. That's what they call it. Uh, we got, yeah, let me see who else is out there with us. Uh, I think I've covered everybody uh, so far. If I haven't, we got Sean Breeze in the building. Sean Breeze, my God, Mr. Breeze. Thank you for being in the building. And we got Joanna out there. Thank you for being here as well. Uh, hello and welcome. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to definitely be a great show. We got CT603. Say cheese in the building. Thank you for being here, bro. We got um, this the soul, Dr. Soul Man is in the building. I love that name. Thank you for being here as always. Nice for friend. We got another fellow uh, photographer out there as well. Docinator, I call him, a.k.a. The Booty King is out there, man. Thank you for being here, bro, as always, my bro. Uh, we got Bearded uh, Nerdy Oaf in the building, Mike Fiella. Uh, and yeah, man. We got it. We got a couple people actually filtering through. Um, so, yeah, man. Now, before we actually get into the photography, we, I'm going to pull up two figures that, you know, pretty much I think, you know, I can't wait to see the interpretation. Uh, Kiko, I, I, here's the thing, bro. Like I said, I, I always I, I've been saying this for the longest time. Like. Tato is really needs to consider you <laughs> like they <laughs> really need to consider you when it comes to these, because I think that like both you guys capture the essence of what it's like to have these figures like in hand. And I think that your selling point on these figures, like, like that's the thing is like when it comes to, you know, photography, we look to others to see their interpretations. And I, I know that's what I do. You know, I look at everybody. Um, once you get figures in hand and, and how you, you know, kind of, you know, put it out there and, you know, give us your interpretation. You know, it's giving us a totally different look at what we would actually get in most uh, of the blogger photos or some of the photos that we actually get, you know, that Hot Toys, you know, pretty much releases. Um, but I wanted to bring up this figure first, of course, uh, one that I believe has been talked about, but I want to approach it totally different. And do you think that this would be uh, these two figures would be fun uh, to type, you know, to kind of play around with from a uh, photography aspect. Now, we know that we got the reveal of both the Ant-Man and the Wasp uh, this week. Um, and, you know, I'm going to start with you first, Nick. Uh, what do you think about, like, and I know you, you may not be getting these in your collection. You may or may not. I'm not sure. But mm -hmm. do you think, you know, just having these, like, just playing around with it and, you know, capturing certain ideas, you think it would be something fun, bro? These, yeah, I'm not going to get these, but these look like they would be fun because, like, um, you know, the usual things I do is I usually just have a picture of them and I have a background of them uh -huh. in like an environment from like the movie or something. So I would probably yeah. do photos from the quantum realm or something like that. Yeah. But I can already see you can have a lot of fun. And since Ant-Man obviously is a, you can have him a small character, you can just do some cool photos where you have him around your house. And yeah, like yeah. Messing yeah. Around. You have him in like <laughs> yeah. playing around with pots and pans or something. Mm -hmm. I think in that sense, I feel like it would be super fun to to mess around with especially you also get the even tinier ant-man so yeah even yeah. that option too but yeah, um yeah. i won't be getting it but they look they, they, they're beautiful figures the, the mm -hmm. head sculpt on on ant-man it's 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 iffy but i think the wasp looks really good in yeah, particular yeah. she looks yeah. really good so um definitely looks like evangeline yeah yeah if i mean I, if somebody wants to send me these figures i would love that and i would take <laughs> a, a bunch of photos of these 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 look awesome yeah yeah, definitely. And I usually like for me, um, getting these picture, uh, these picture, uh, these these figures, the the diorama pieces, like the smaller like scale figures, are the price of admission for me. I love that. I love the aspect of actually having it. And I'm now loving the simple fact that they are including like a little miniature diorama base with the figures as well. Mm -hmm. You can attach them from the base. Uh, so they're right now. It looks like there's so much you'll be able to do with it. So that that looks yeah, pretty fun. yeah, it looks yeah. awesome. Yeah, it looks pretty fun. Kiko, I know like. With you, man, like same thing. Like you give it to the point where your your photos look almost too real, scary real. Like as if that shit. Like I'm looking at the figure, like almost like a damn movie still, bro. Um, and I know you have like certain tricks, you know, and 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 um, you know, certain ways that you actually do it. Do you think now? First off, are you going to get these get this figure, or do you think it's going to be fun to play around with? It's really a catch-22, uh, just to answer what you'd said about the realism, is because Hot Toys are so realistic mm -hmm. that if you 
try too hard, essentially, people do think there's, and I'm not saying all my look like movie stills by any means, but mm -hmm. there, it's so funny when I take a picture of, because the Ant-Man and Wasp are the re most recent figures that I've put on Instagram, actually, the ones from last yeah, yeah. season or year, whatever you call that. And mm -hmm. without fail, the one where it's always just them on a table being like, here's two mm -hmm. figures. I love these yeah. in my collection. I'm mean, reviewing them, essentially. Those get yeah. five times the likes and engagement as opposed to the actual mm -hmm. toy photography because i think yeah. it's a catch-22 where people are like oh i don't want to take a picture of a tv show or a movie screen i'm not going to like that because i think people just scroll through and they don't realize it's a figure so yeah. that's a catch-22 which i think is interesting but they are fun i i do think these are better iterations um mm -hmm. but as i told on will stream last time is that Ant-Man's not really evolved that much, especially in mm -hmm. his suit. There's quite an upgrade, I'd say, for the Wasp suit because it switched from like mm -hmm. gold and navy to mm -hmm. black and yellow, which looks really, really good, really, really pops. But this mm -hmm. is essentially the same thing, and nothing's going to be you know, mind-blowing, I think, about it. Probably some better materials to work with. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I was a holdout, honestly, on the original Ant-Man and Wasp. I got those um, from Dante uh, when he was trying to get yeah. rid of some. I was like, you know, I don't have um, Ant-Man and the Wasp because I wasn't really blown away. But I like the first Ant-Man movie, but I didn't, yeah, wasn't yeah, really yeah, blown yeah. away by Ant-Man and the Wasp. And I'm like, eh, yeah, I don't yeah. need them. But then I was like, well, the deal's too good to pass up. And I still need Ant-Man. So I, yeah, I did grab yeah. those. So mm -hmm. we'll wait because I know we're getting really close to the actual mm -hmm. debut of the film. Heard mixed things, heard yeah. good things. I haven't heard anything bad. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, well, I get them most likely because I think it'll probably be an upgrade from the Wasp. Um, and obviously, I pretty much get everything anyway because I've. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think they're cool, man. I, I really do. Especially yeah, because I said, yeah. I can't wait for Cassie. That's the one I want is the Cassie. Yeah, I see, that's the thing. Stick, and I love yeah. the tennis shoes. I love the tennis shoes. Yeah, bro. They gave her Converse. Hips don't lie nigga, on that figure. <laughs> Jesus. not at all bro <laughs> <laughs> not at all i'm like yo they really put some emphasis on the yeah pull, pull up that there, picture bro. yeah uh, yeah I, let's be careful on the teenage body i guess but um yeah, pull up like, the um just, of the side by just, side of the three of them or whatever because you got evangeline yeah. there and then you got yeah. her i mean look at the hips on that one damn bro like they went but it's Funny. but it, you can almost really tell like there is a it's it's definitely a different body it's a definitely a different body type 100%, it looks yeah. like almost the same body type that they use for the Reva, the, the Reva figure. You know what I mean? That's so, a good point. That's a good point. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, cause you can see that it's, they're, they're using, they're using more curves with her versus like the wasp. So it's definitely going to be, and a, I love a, that because there's a lot of yeah. female figures that are yeah. kind of Barbie ish. I mean, I mean, let's yeah. not try to be weird or anything like that, but we know that Scarlett Johansson's a curvy woman, but none of the black yeah. widow figures have really shown that if you want to yeah. call it that. And this they definitely, definitely brings a new level of, of realism to it. So, yeah. but yeah, I'm excited and, for purple at the very least. It, yeah. And I like the simple fact that they, now, of course, I mean, for licensing issues, they can't use Converse, but it does look like the Converse shoes. So yeah, they're sick, um, man. Yeah, definitely. The only the only thing about this figure though, I was I was just like, I wish they would have went the route of giving us stature, you know, just the comic act, you know, the comic version of her. But again, you know, I guess they had to go this route because it would be hard to us for us, uh, you know, to really believe or you know that that suspension of disbelief, like when it comes or you know to try to dive into simple fact that she can grow, she could be like Goliath and stuff like that. Um, but they're going with this particular iteration, which we haven't really seen the film yet, so I don't know what they're going to do with that. Yeah, we've only seen a few promotional pieces, a few little yeah. pieces the trailers, so there's still a lot of intrigue and mystery, and what a lot of people yeah. have mentioned is that this may not be the final suits for any of these three by the end of the true. film. So. That is true. true yeah. This is true. This, that, that is true. We might see something completely different uh, from her um, and from, from the character itself, but again, we know very, very little about her uh, uh as far as her portrayal on camera but yeah i do want to actually get that figure and the thing is you're right like you don't necessarily like if you're you know originally the the original ant-man and wasp those figures hold up like they're they're really you know especially that wasp definitely a solid piece to have but it's just the simple fact that if i want comic accuracy then definitely i'm going to probably get that wasp uh, uh figure um the ant-man again i'll probably end up getting that as well because i like that i mean i'm I gravitate to that head sculpt more than what we actually got from the Ant Man and the Wasp uh, uh, head sculpt that we got from Ant Man because it was just like, it, come on, man, they didn't have to do that. But I mean, it it's not as bad, but it's not, it's definitely not good. 
Uh, I want to bring up this particular figure too, uh, of course, uh, Wasp. Um, and like you know, you said, Nick, this does look like Evangeline Lilly. Um, a lot of people don't really like the hair. You know, when they're looking at it, they're like, it looks like a soccer mom fro or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. We can't help. Yeah, it's it's a little film. weird, but it's comic yeah, accurate. Right? It's comic yeah. accurate, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it is. Like, I don't. That's the thing is, it's like, this is the way she looks. And that's why I'm like, I don't have a problem. Right. With it. <laughs> it's just the way she looks. Like, how can you you not like something, but this is exactly the how. And, and, and I think they killed like they really, to be quite honest, I think they get her likeness like almost spot on. You know what I mean? Even what we got from the last version from Ant-Man and the Wasp, the, the uh, uh, two, um, you know, it, 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 it looks like her. And and with her hair, I mean, it's just a different iteration. I don't see it as a problem. What do you think, Nick? Yeah, I think this likeness is stronger than the last one. Like, yeah. I feel like in this one, there's something, bro, something about the, like her, her lips that like, they look really real to me for some reason. Yeah. Um, and I feel like, like that was my issue with the last one was um, I felt like the bottom half of her face didn't really look like her, but this one, they mm. nailed it. And the yeah. hair looks really good. Somebody said in the comics, it looks like Mando's hair. It kind of does. But, uh, I mean, it, it looks really, I think this head sculpt looks really strong. And it's yeah. really cool. I'm really glad that almost all these head sculpts, it seems like they're going to start doing the rolling eyes, too. Yeah. Um, Because it, it just adds, like, you know, we're talking about photography here. It yeah. adds to the photography level because now you can move around the eyes and different expressions. And sometimes it gets boring when they're all looking forward, you know? Like, it's cool to have the option to move them around, have them doing yeah. cool things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, to me, it's 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 spot on her. Um, and, and Kiko, from a, a, a you know, photography standpoint, I know this would because like the way you capture like just the close up shots, I know something like this would be fun to play around with. Man. Yeah, we uh, I know we're going to talk about it. And I know Drago is about to bark in 10 seconds once he sees his mom walk in the door. I can <laughs> hear them downstairs. If they bark, I'll, I'll mute. Anyway, um, yeah. but one of the things about my style and the thing I love is that Hot Toys does a lot of work for you by putting the yeah. glass irises in. So they do a lot yeah. of the reflection. And so when you're doing yeah. light reflection and things like that, trying to capture that look, if you know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about, and yeah. the little white dots in the eyes, essentially, being able to move the eyes is huge because it really opens up your posability and the different angles mm. that you can capture there. But it mm. does have some issues because they aren't human eyes. You know, they don't exactly reflect 100%. So you do have to sometimes use a few little tricks and such to where they don't look wonky as far as the reflection because you can have your light here and I know we're already jumping yeah. into the photography thing. You can have your light here and their eyes looking that way, but they'll still yeah. look weird. So you have to kind of work through that. But yeah, it definitely gives you a lot more options, which I think once once the purse are we officially calling them purrs now? Is that what they're always called now for all the movable eyes? Do they change that term or I because I, I, I still mean, use purse. I still use yeah, purse, bro. Parallel eye rolling system. I don't know if they are parallel anymore, but we'll call it the eye rolling system. Purse. We'll call it that. Um, so if that becomes the new trend, it does really open up your display to do so mm -hmm. much because mm -hmm. depending on how you move your figures around, if you want to angle them, they can still be angled and still looking at you, which is a great, great thing. So I think it's a great, great yeah. feature, and especially for these figures at this price point to be able to have. I, I say it's a simple feature, but it's a necessary feature. And if they're going to be a figure at this price point, that should be a feature, especially as you've seen other companies, you know, start to go that route. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And and the thing is, it's like you like you said, like they they kind of they lay out the blueprint. They kind of like give you like a, it's like a head start, you know, in a sense, because they give you the idea and it's up to you to take it and run with it. Uh, but it definitely looks good, like, um, and, and oh, how you pull it off, um, you know. And again, like to have these, because I like to, you know, when I'm, you know, doing just like posing videos and, you know, angles, I like to capture the in motion type of scenario and just add like subtle effects just to kind of, you know, um, but the it's like you guys bring such realism to what you do when it comes to, you know, capturing just the whole idea of a scene. Or like he goes some like one time you put up a photo I forget which one it was you put up a photo and I was like I thought literally I was like okay let me check IMDb and see if there's a movie coming out or something like that but I was like oh wait 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 that's a photo like that's like literally a photo Nick you did the same thing and and you know again I don't want to jump out of this you know this particular but I want to go with you know which what I what I pulled up here Nick because I had it on a thumbnail and how beautiful this looks. Like literally, 
I saw this and I was like, yo, come on. <laughs> like, this looks creepier than a fucking film, bro. Like, literally, it <laughs> does. Like, because of the way the light angles up, like, it made him look so creepy, bro. But it was so, it's so dope. And, like, the way you said you do backgrounds, that is the hardest. And maybe you guys can explain it to me. The hardest part for me is figuring out how you guys scale this. You know what I mean? Like how to scale it. It may not be as hard as I'm thinking it is because I haven't tried it yet. But adding the background and then just having the figure itself blend in so well. I mean, and, and, and the thing is, because like now I'm not ashamed to say it, yo. I use I have both the M50. I'm still using a regular M50 and my iPhone 14 camera, bro. That's it. That's what I basically use, you know, but I know that you you have tricks on how you do certain things. But this when I looked at it, I was like, yo, come on, man. Like this. It not only looks like a movie scene, but it just looks like scary. Good. Like, Nick, like you pulling this off. Like, so what is your approach normally, bro? I think um, I think me and Kiko use similar, very similar techniques here. Um, the background on most of my pictures now, I use my monitor, actually, like from mm -hmm. my um. Uh, my computer and yeah. I I'll bring up an image of um, something. So I basically just went on Google and you get a picture. You just search up like Emperor's throne room. You look mm -hmm. for something you like. And right here, I like the window and, yeah. and then, you know, I had the chair, put the chair in front of the screen. And then I had the figure like a few inches in front to add some depth to it. So it looks like he's yeah. further out. Yeah. And then, yeah, you set up your camera wherever you need, you get some lights. The most important thing is lighting 100%. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. what always sells it because you can you can have the pose and you can have the background and all that and mm -hmm. you can still take a nice photo. I'm not saying you can't, but it, it just enhances it even further once you have the lighting. And that's something took me um took me a while to get. Um but um yeah, it actually is very simple. The other day I did I did help Riley do that. I don't know if you saw he posted a photo of his Spider-Man with yeah. a background. He tried that yeah. technique and he was like, he was like, Oh wow, like that's it, that's all you do. And I was like, yeah, bro. Like it's actually not <laughs> anybody. Anybody could do it. It's it's really easy, actually. So yeah. I mean, I I hope everybody tries it. It's very very simple. Um, yeah, Kiko, you want to say anything? Because I know, like I said, well, I think you do very similar technique there, right? Kiko, yeah. Kiko, bro, this right here, like if Kiko takes pictures and you make them look sexy, good, bro. And I'm gonna pull up, <laughs> like, bro. This right here, man, and Ooh. I have this figure too. I was like, "Yo, you make this look sexy, good." And it's just the, it's just subtle movements, subtle angles. It's like even the idea of having the bat in front of her face and the shadow on the right eye, where all you see is the left. Mm. Like that is scary, good, bro. Like this is, and I even I even haven't even shown like, but it's just like how you did this. Wow, bro. The focus is just there, there. Well, I certainly appreciate the kind words. And I, I'm probably one of my worst critics on things because I do feel like I rush out a lot of things simply for mm -hmm. content's sake. And I put things out there that I'm not exactly proud of or things like that um, for the sake of putting things out there. And I need to be better of that. But something like this, for example, you are limited because her eyes are in one angle and she has her mouth open so you have to be real creative on what you do with the figure so with that being said you have to say okay if i just because i put two harley pictures up at one time i was like okay if i'm going to take one picture mm -hmm. how in the world am i going to basically get a different one to where because mm -hmm. it's the same face the same eyes you know what yeah. am i going to do and so i was like yeah. i know let's cover her mouth up because that's, yeah. that's the difference there and if her eyes are already looking in one way let's just uh, you you got to think of the character itself. I mean, mm -hmm. it's Harley Quinn. She's a seductress. You know, she's edgy. So mm -hmm. what exactly could she be doing that would fit her character? Well, yeah. being sexy and playful and something mm -hmm. like that. And so I'm like, okay, yeah. that's fine. And a lot of these actually happen on accident. Like mm -hmm. I, I take a lot of different photos of just moving the lights around because I'm sure Nick can attest to this is that you'll have this idea in your head. And it does not translate. And you're like, well, shit. Right, wait, what is this? What is this one rated, by the way? What am I allowed to say on here? Oh, you can say what you want. Okay. I said shit. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't want to get you banned or anything. No, um, said, so no, you'll no. like say, oh, shit, this doesn't look the way I thought it was going to be. And it's sometimes just moving the camera around. And then do you finally find it on accident? This was one found on accident. And I'm like, okay, now that I saw what that looks like through the lens, 
Mm. Now let's perfect it. Let's get the light above the accent lighting on the head. Let's turn down some shadows, boost some light here. And it's really just playing back and forth. I know you talked about, and I know a lot of people do phone photography and those are great, but you aren't going to get some of the mm -hmm. subtle, um, not details, but the, the settings that, an actual camera gives you the right, the access yeah, to with yeah. you know, shutter speed, the ISOs and things like that. You just can't get that on a phone right now. No, you can't. Phone cameras are great, but I don't know if they're great for like close ups like this because mm -hmm. they're, they're not meant for that. I mean, unless I mean, you're using like, you know, you can have like a close up. You got to have a yeah. lot of different apps that are going to. Yeah. Yeah. And like, like, like third party, thing. like software. And yeah. Third party, like, even bro. like add on accessories and such. Mm -hmm. But, but yeah, that, that's part of, I mean, I think Nick does the exact same thing going back to what you just said is, you know, the digital backgrounds. I like to call it the volume, just like they do with Mando. You yeah. build, you build your little world around the figure. And then I know people were talking in the comments about some of the lighting is that set your camera, find your window of what you're looking for. And you're like, okay, here's my screen. This is what it's going to look like. And then you're like, okay, I need to boost the light coming up from behind. And you just go back and forth manipulating the, the ups and the downs. Cause I was actually, cause I knew we were going to be talking about photography this morning. And I was thinking that if you think about the way all stylized photography is that it's just that it's stylized. Mm. That's not yeah. real world photography. Lighting does not hit you like that in real life. If you ever go yeah. out and you see someone doing a photo shoot, they have lights and they have accents and things like yeah. that. And so that's the way I incorporate my style is I'm like, okay, these are many people. These are many yeah. actors and they're going to need yeah. the same things, many accents and many lights and such. So of all the things that you look at out there and you are like, wow, this is a really cool photo. That's not real life. They're all, they have accent lights to make yeah. it look like that. And so that's what I kind of do here. Yeah, bro. This, this actually, right I actually here. like that quill. That turned out better than I thought it was going to. Bro, that quill is incredible, man. Can I um can yeah. I say something real quick? I yeah. want to um just jump on um what Kiko said where he was like, Oh, I'm like my biggest critic. Like, um, but dude, I totally understand that because I ironically enough, like you brought up that picture of Emperor um Lael. Yeah. That picture, I wasn't very happy with it. Like when I took it, like I took it and I was like, uh, like it looks okay. Like, I don't know. I could have like in my Man. head, I saw like in my head, I was like, I envisioned it a little nicer and I just kind of put it on there and to see, you know, I was just like, ah, you know, I took the photo. I might as well post it. And I posted it and people did seem to really like it. And I was like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Like I, I should probably not be super self-conscious of what super, it is. Super, super critical or hypercritical. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, that's one thing I've been working on. I think I've been getting better with. But um, I'm yeah. I only got my camera like three and a half months ago. I was using a well, my phone for like the, mm. the first year and a half. I was on Instagram um in this community. Um, so I'm still learning a lot of the settings. So I'm not very good with portraits yet. Like I'm I'm slowly trying to do them. I'm still I'm just doing mainly just the easy wide shots and all that. Um, and then what you got up here actually is like my older, this is like all my phone photos. Like before I had my camera, these this were photos. Yeah. yeah. These are photos. These were, are like, this is like my other style I do where I do heavily edited photos where I take yeah. a picture of the figures with on my, not a green screen, just like a black background. And I Photoshop them into an environment and, um, and I create little um, images with them and yeah, they are highly edited. So it's not like, the best thing in the world because you're not getting a look at like the unedited figure really but um yeah yeah i i like doing it because i liked um just the um the kind of the creation it the behind it yeah yeah the creative element behind it yeah. yeah a lot of these composition type photos it's something i figured out that i'm not good at and so i steer <laughs> away from it one of the things i feel that have made me find who my identity is if you want to call it that on my page is that i know what i'm not good at and a lot of those are the full body shots. I'm just not good at it because it's hard to light it. When you're in a little world like this with a little monitor and things like that, it's very hard to get the lighting right on a full figure and yeah, it, to make it yeah. look right and such. I'm like, eh, that's not my thing. So I, I opted for something like this. And for a figure that is widely hated, I think that, you know, I think that looks like Scarlet to me. And it does. It, yeah, I think it, it looks good. And for root, yeah. rooted hair, um, it, it all just comes down to the angles. And people like to shit on a lot of the head sculpts or whatever, but they're pretty good if you light them the right way. And for yeah, a, lot yeah. Of the, yeah, a lot of the ones that people don't like, I think one of the worst ones is kind of what the one up there, the Pedro Pascal one from the Mando. Yeah. Because it, oh, it's a little soft and it's hard. That one was hard to light and get the features right. And mm -hmm, because it's a mm -hmm. soft sculpt, 
when you look about the lighting and the the depth that the light hits crevices and you know cracks in the face and your pores because one of the things if you look real close on some of your on your figures head sculpts they have pores which is incredible yeah and they have like yeah, and, detail, I mean, just the paint yeah. apps that they use mm -hmm. but for this one because it is a little bit soft it's hard to put the right shadows where they need to and so you do have yeah. to kind of work a little bit around that yeah i mean and and like again this this you know you, you talk about the actual head sculpts and how people you know, have been saying for the longest time, like, okay, this is a terrible head sculpt to this, whatever, you know, and you don't like, I, I noticed that like when, when we look at like a lot of, cause even when we look at the, the blogger photos or the, you know, the photographers who take the actual photos for the figures, once they are, they're actually released, um, we, it, it, to me, you know, and I, and I don't know if you guys would say, when you look at it, sometimes you could tell that it is like sometimes almost heavily edited to the point where it takes the features away from the head sculpt. You can't really tell, what you're looking at because they're editing it. It's, it's always edited a certain way that sometimes can take away from it that once when you get the figure in hand, you can like, well, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, you know what I mean? And it's not the, t it's, and I'm not saying that with like all, you know, photographers, it's just that the way they do it, like, and I wanted to pull this up Kiko because like, again, we talked about like you, and I'm, I love that you talked about this. You were like, yo, mm -hmm. it's not as bad as everybody looked. And because you said that I was like, yeah, I want that figure, bro. I definitely yeah, that, that want is it. Scarlet, a hundred percent. If it you don't think it is, I don't know what you're looking at. Yeah, it's her one hundred percent. Like in like the photos that you've taken of it, it looks phenomenal. I like because the thing is, I have this one. Shout out to OG Mando too for hooking me up. Um, I have this one, um, and I also have the black suit. And you can, you know, I was watching, you know, Justin's review on them, and you can interchange and swap out the head sculpts. You can, yeah, and, yeah. And the other one looks good on this one as well. But I, I love the way this looks. And then when you were talking about it, I was like, yo, I agree. This thing is, is it's, it's dope for people who, you know, were on the fence about it. Like, if you love, if you're a Scarlett Johansson fan, if you're a Black Widow fan, like such as myself, then this is the perfect piece to have. And you want something that's different. The white suit is completely different. Yeah, the white you know, pops on shelves, man. Yeah. That's one of the things I was saying. Like, my Kingpin, this white yeah. widow, the, even yeah. the, Sam, the Sam Wilson cap. When those white suits pop yeah. on a shelf, man, they're, they're cool. They're really yeah, cool. Yeah, definitely, definitely, bro. And I, I love what you – that here it is. This is the one I was looking at, bro. Whoa. Yeah, it's like, so good. That is so bro, good. Bro, come Hunter on, figure's man. Good too. And it's funny because the one I originally did of this – I took it down because I was like, it, I, I, it sucks. I don't like it. And the next day, I put this <laughs> one, which I think looks better. I think it looks better. Bro, like, it's like this, the dimensions there. Like, I mean, you're looking at Tamora Morrison at his finest, but is this how you, and that's the thing, like, capturing just the, the right shadows, hitting it the right, having the right lighting. We talk about that all the time. Having the right lighting, you know, and angling it a certain way to where it really captures uh you know that figure nick i yeah. want to pull this Wait, up sorry, yeah. no what were you going to say go ahead Kiko. i was just going to say and maybe we'll talk about a little bit more about the type of lighting and yeah when whenever you if you look at real people portraits like mm -hmm. human beings not figures there's always especially on videography that they do there's usually three lights that they'll use to mm -hmm. essentially get their shot mm -hmm. there will be the left the right or the under and then there's yeah. always one on the top basically given the shape of the head yeah. which is interesting which is why i always try to put a light at the top as you can see you know just that little faint red on the top of his head because you can the lights shape the figure so they look like they're 3d essentially mm -hmm. and they're and mm -hmm. they're in an environment so if you can add more lights and you can get away with one you can get away with natural light obviously but if you can incorporate that the three light rule is what i use um pretty much on all my figures there'll be three light points at some point and that's how mm -hmm. i do those yeah man like and yeah like they said cropping like just using like little subtle techniques um and again it is all about lighting and that's here's the thing because this is what i'm guilty of and i'm just letting you guys know i use so when i'm actually doing my take your position you know i'm just more so like i said figure posing photography stuff like that just posing doing videos and stuff like that i had to learn and just like because even like uh dan cheating ass dan he put me onto this um I actually had to order like certain lighting um, separate from what I have in my light box because this is what you can, this is what I'm guilty of. Overexposure of too many lights can really take away from the figure and it, you don't get the dimensions that you want because it's too overly exposed. And I looked at it and I was like, yeah, it is. Now I know I'm just doing this for posing attributes, 
But at the same time, if I want to capture a really decent angle, I can't have these lights on all the time. I got to kind of play around with the lighting 100%. shift, do something totally different. And that's what I'm getting into. I just got these lights in and I'm gonna actually try it out. Um, as, as I've always said, and I'm, I've, I've talked a lot, so I'll shut up after this. No, no, go um, One of the things that most important is that your background can never be brighter than the accent light because mm -hmm. then you're essentially looking into the sun at that yeah, point, you know, and yeah. then you get the silhouette and it don't look good. Or then you try to overcompensate and then it just washes out. So yeah. always have the, when people are saying, well, I don't, I don't get that look when I do it, turn your monitor brightness down. If you're using that method or something like that, or mm -hmm. make it to mm -hmm. where you boost the light of the accent light or something, because the accent yeah. lights should always be stronger than your background. That's my, there's your free tip for today. Yeah, definitely. And Nick, I wanted to pull this up, man, because you know, bro, you, <laughs> you have a way of making these characters look menacing, bro. Like, like, like you make him look so evil. Like, I'm literally scared of this dude looking at him right now, bro. And I'm like, yeah, it's <laughs> Michael Keaton, but damn, the way you did this vulture, bro, looks more menacing than he did on film. Like, you know what I mean? But I know a lot of it is about angling and lighting, you know, like, like Kiko was talking about, like turning down a light capturing it from a certain angle and you can even see like even with the dimensions here uh nick you can see the, i can see like the lines the pores you know i can see mm -hmm. that right there it looks good yeah this figure has a really good head sculpt but um it's just bogged down a little bit by the paintwork the paintwork isn't up to par really mm -hmm. if it mm -hmm. had like if it had like a hot toys level like um or a custom repaint or just mm -hmm. even just hot toys level paint job it would be in, in a really really good head sculpt dude it's really nice um but I mean, exactly in this photo is exactly what Kiko was saying is that like you have that that light on top that really brings out the shape of his head. And you can also see on the back where his wings, where the wings mm -hmm. probably would have gotten lost in the background, but it's hidden the wings, too. Yeah. Um, and then you got some lights, one on his right side and then a very faint one on his left side, too. Um, yeah. And that's what really helps it. And but his and then at the end of the day, posing also helps it, too. And. With this, it was very simple. I mean, he's just standing there and you have his head tilted down. You yeah. get the camera at the right angle. And mm, like that was the money shot. Like I, I I, felt like I had a hard time getting good angles with this guy. Mm -hmm. But when I got this one right here, I was like, ooh, that's the ooh, one. This one was pretty good, too. I, yeah. I, I really like this one, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. If you can incorporate kind of the, if you can incorporate the Kubrick stare, you know, and the mm -hmm. lighting from underneath, you know, that's how you get the villainous looks, whether it be this mm -hmm. or Pennywise or Joker. Yeah. A lot of a lot of villains, if you can light it from underneath, you get that mm -hmm. like that you get that look, which makes it a little yeah. easier. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, bro. Like, I mean, the way um now let me ask you guys a question. Um now, do you find it better? Because I know that, like, I and I see, because we, we always basically find our niche and what we're good at. Um, I talk about, like, people like Commander Green, um, Ace Green. Like, he's good with environment shots. Like, he's able to capture, like, lighting, like, natural lighting outside. And the way he edits his photos, it's like, all right, he's capturing the element of a scene, but it looks almost picture, like, damn near picture perfect. Like, you're looking, like, scene for scene, shot for shot, shots. How he captures the natural lighting um you know on the outside um do you find it a bit harder or, or do you do you have you have you guys ever tried to actually capture lighting like natural light outside when you're doing photos for figures i've done a few um i did one session where i went actually outdoors with mando and um boba fett and um the natural lighting like natural lighting just hits different there's something about mm -hmm. it it just hits different but it is i find it so hard to replicate it though with um you know, with with artificial lights, it's very hard to replicate. So, yeah, definitely do. When I've seen his photos on Flex Friday, I've yeah. always been super duper impressed by that because I feel like I've never been able to do that. I've tried it so many times where I've taken um, a photo of, let's say, like Mando on my screen or Boba Fett. Recently, I was doing that where I had him on um, in like I was trying to had a forest background yeah. and I wanted the lighting to look a little like natural, but I I couldn't really get it. So I just kind of settled with like just the nat the led lighting i had but um i myself find it a little difficult yeah yeah what you think kiko sorry i was on mute there so i don't do a lot of outside shots because that's i can't right. use my color lights essentially because mm, it wouldn't look mm, good. and that's just not yeah. my style but one of the ones yeah, i did yeah, do yeah. 
is way back when I might have um, I did a snow trooper out in the snow and that was fun um, just because you could make it look realish. I mean, I don't get a lot of snow here in Tennessee. We get ice, but um, we don't get a lot of snow. So I'm like, this is my opportunity to go out there and try a little bit of snow, snow work. And but because of unless you go out there with a light kit and some type of way to bounce the light, it's always going to be more challenging because you can't really outshine the sun sometimes. So the sun's going to be the ultimate light form, you know, out mm-hmm. there. And that's why I have so much respect for real life photographers and real people that can use those outdoor shots because they know how to utilize it. And a lot of them use the reflectors where they bounce light into, into the face and such like that. I don't have any of that stuff. I'm not trained to do any of that stuff. So I do respect it, but I won't do outside shots because I can't use my color pops, but yeah, I mean, for those that do do it, I mean, it's, it's a great thing. Yeah. That's I think CG rock is the one who does the blogger photos outside. Um, Mm -hmm, And those, mm -hmm. those always look really, really good. Yeah, bro. I, I mean, I I attempted it once with Ray in the um the snow speeder. Um, but I found that like literally, I have to wait until like the sun sets a certain time or like in the evening time, like you know what I mean, where I can actually get the perfect shot. Because when it's too much sun, too much light outside, over overexposure, I can't do anything about it. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not even going to try it. So I usually wait until like there's a slight bit of overcast uh, uh, to basically, you know, pull it off. I tried even like, you know, for instance, I, I'm going to pull up this photo because I know they're talking about it in the chat a little bit. Uh, but I like with this one, I tried. So I, what I did was I used the Stormtrooper background um, that we have. Like I actually used two of those, had the walls fleshed in the background, just quick sh- shot with Axe Wolves in the background, focus on uh, Bo-Katan, just trying to capture. But the thing is, the lighting I still like looking at it. I wasn't happy with the lighting the way it was because it was still a bit harsh. So it's just working with those the, the shutters a certain way to give it, you know, just like a certain dynamic. Now you, I look at this, but then Kiko, I look at this right here, bro, and I'm like, you gave this a 1950s fucking element, bro, like a 1940s, 1950s, and I'm like, how, like. This looks like an anime character. I mean, Bro, I know it, it is like an it, anime character, but, but it, it looks, looks like, like an it, anime character. That's what I'm saying. Like, how are you capturing the idea? Like, this looks shot for shot like an animated character. Like, I'm watching What If, and I'm watching a scene almost even better than what we got in the animated show. And it pissed me off that I saw this and I'm like, yo, this is amazing, bro. Well, like, I hate to bring I hate to bring out so much anger from you. <laughs> um, but this this is one of those that was an accident again. Um, it's mm-hmm. just I, I wanted to do a close-up shot, but mm-hmm. as we know with these animated what if figures, I yeah, I, I don't have the Steve Rogers because I don't have the place for the Hydra Stomper. I'm not gonna just yeah, have yeah. Steve, you know. Yeah. Um, so but I did want this because I love the Captain Carter, and I was like, well, we may not ever get a real Captain Carter, and this yeah, is pretty yeah, damn yeah. good. And she's a great yeah. figure, by the way. I think you and I Definitely. have talked about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. with this, I'm like, what am I gonna do? Because the face is flat, you know. There's she doesn't have real features, it's an mm-hmm. animated face. So what are you gonna do? And so with that, you I kind of just like, okay, let me position the light from behind. As you can see, it's coming from over her shoulder, you know, and it's hitting where her cheeks accent. And then I just kind of put a light from underneath mm-hmm. and then one from the side. And miraculously, it happened because of the depth of focus. But this was not planned. But I'm glad that you like it. And I think it did turn out well. But I don't know if I could say, like, this is what I was going for um, yeah. because it was an accident. But I sometimes you just find the right things at the right spot. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean. It looks good, though. You, you have to work because this this reminds me of like a big Marvel Legends character that doesn't have like the best, you know, head sculpts, you know, because they're they're twenty dollar six inch figures. And so mm-hmm. when I mm-hmm. used to do toy photography with those, that's what I had before I had Hot Toys was Marvel Legends and Black mm-hmm. Series. And that's where I started with my toy photography. And one of the things I was always jealous of with Hot Toys people, I'm like, wow, they have great head sculpts and they look so real. But mm-hmm. this brought me back to the Marvel Legends days because sometimes they have some really iffy head sculpts like because they do like the face printing tech you know it's all just like kind of like a sticker that they put on it that's their paint apps and so i'm like what's the best way to kind of shoot this and get Mm -hmm. a shot that looks real and this kind of brought me back to that because it's a real similar situation because it's not a real face so you have to do your best you can with it yeah definitely man and and i think again you you 
yeah you you killed it with that bro i saw it and i was like yeah um I, yeah i'll just stick to like it's it's all about when you gotta admit you gotta stick to what you know and i was like i'll stick to <laughs> what i know man because it looks so so real and and, I, and nick i'd be remiss if i didn't do this while latoya t was you know in this in, in here bro i, I know what you're bringing it. up i have to do it bro yeah. because <laughs> Bro, she loves, you know that she loves the armor, bro. Yeah. She loves the armor, bro. As a matter of fact, this is hers right here. She just wants me to put it down here in a good space because she didn't want me to keep it um, upstairs. But, you know, she loves the armor. And seeing this, bro, I was like, the way you captured this, the depth, um, everything, you know, um, you know, just the, the actual uh, focus on this character with Mando in the background, I was like, yeah, I, I love the way you did this, bro. And I, and I love the way the light, it's like the light up top is creating the shadows um, from a certain angle. Um, again, like, it's just like the angling, it's this subtle techniques that are used that make, make stuff like this incredible, bro. Yeah, I was very happy with this shot. This is one of the few shots I took in, like, all, I, it was like a one shot thing. Well, I had multiple, but it was like, I did on my first shot, and I was like, oh, I don't have to sit here for an hour and keep going. This is awesome. Like, <laughs> like I got the right angle and all that. I was very happy with it. Um, and, you know, I want to say another thing about um, doing the photography that I've learned is that it helps you love the pieces more yeah, than like if I didn't do 100%. it, I probably bro. This armor probably would have been gone just because like I feel like she's I don't know. I was kind of disappointed with the figure a little bit. But yeah. bro, when I take photos of her, I, I fall in love again. And I'm like, oh, she's like, she's such a beautiful looking piece yeah. like the, the fur you get the lighting just right um mm -hmm. yeah and then you pair with mando it's even better like yeah, she's in, she's bro. she looks so incredible in photos yeah like, i just want to say shout out to being able to put two because if you notice about mine they're always single photos i can't i cannot figure out the trick to get two figures in the thing at all so the fact that you're able to ad adequately light both of them hats to hats off to, and three if you count grogu in the corner um, oh yeah <laughs> i can't i can't do and i'll admit that I, I can't do multiple figures in a photo I, they just do not look well for me so hats off for you being able to break that down down thank you Bro, break it i mean like literally <laughs> kill that um and it, it's again just like a scene it's like him like mando is just, just stepping in the background photo bomb and trying to but the focus <laughs> is you know what i mean but i i love that um and Kiko, I want to pull this up, bro, because number one, you gave me a like duh type of reality check because I forgot that I actually had. I'm gonna pull this up here. I forgot because I have all the malls, I have the DX version, and I have both the head sculpts. And you use it looks like you use the one from the DX for the uh 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 the solo version, the solo mall version, yeah. Um, on his figure, and I'm like, why the hell? did not think about that because then when I tried it, I was like, it looks so much more menacing, um, you know, on that figure. But even this shot uh, that you captured uh, with this piece, I was like, it just made like you, we talk about it. Like, you know, Nick, you just said, interesting point is that you fall more in love with a figure. Once you take the shot, like the right, when you take these shots, it's like, okay, I, now I know why, you know, I, I love these figures and seeing this shot right here. I was like, yeah, that's, why i love mall so 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 much bro like just it, it's innovation uh when you see it well lit saber lit up you know a decent way i mean how you have the effects on that um it, it really looks good and again it's just like the shadowing and the thing is it's like when you're looking at these pieces it's like it i know for me i have to kind of play around with the angles but i think what would be less of a stress for me is the proper lighting having the proper lighting in the right place to where I, I don't have to worry about, you know, moving around, futzing around with it too much, you know, worrying about how am I going to capture a certain angle. And I think that's what it all boils down to is having the right, like, cause I was again, hard headed, still using the box lighting. Uh, but I was like, yeah, I can't use that anymore because I was just so hooked on doing it that way. And I was just kind of in a comfort zone, my comfort level. I wanted to stay within that pocket. But now that I got these new lights, okay, okay, it just takes the work. You got to put in the work to get the right angles, bro. That's what I like about this right here. This is, this is one of my favorites that I've actually taken. Um, and the mall figures are probably some of my favorite to shoot because 
of the eyes, as we talked yeah. about, you can move yeah. them around. So you can, and, and what's unique about all the malls is that they are all interchangeable because they got the magnetic head. So you can, I love taking the original DX 1617, whichever one you got and throwing it on the clone wars one, throwing yeah. it on the solo one, because this, this head sculpt, the one where he, the, it's not really the snarl, but I guess the, the serious face, you can do so much with it because you can do like right now he's doing the Kubrick stare, you know, just kind of looking yeah. through his eyebrows and you can just do so much with it. And I just loved the aesthetic of like the bare chested type of thing with the, uh, uh, with the necklace hanging down and the, the cape is good. And it's a really, really cool aesthetic. But yeah, this is one yeah. of my favorite ones that um, when I did my how to do toy photography video and I put a poll up, I'm like, which figure you guys want me to show you how to do. This is the second place runner up. And they're like, do you want to do Maul or Anakin? Anakin ended up winning, and that's the one we did for the show. But second was Maul. And I was like, okay, well, here is what I was going to do for Maul. And this is what came out from that. So this was a fan vote request to do a Maul figure. And I think it turned out really, really well. And just going back to the lighting again, as you can see, if I like to, um, if you want to tell a story, it's obviously at night. He's or some dark place, cave, whatever it may be. And so moonlight. And I was just actually talking um, with Knight of Ren just a second ago about moonlighting and like the moon out there moonlighting you know kind of hitting his face a little bit but mm -hmm. to where that's the main thing but there's still the glow of the saber you know accenting the other side of his face and you kind of yeah. have to think of if you had a saber in real life where's the light coming from it's coming yeah. from down there and up and so if you put all yeah. those things together that's how you get life likeness and yeah th this turned out better than i thought it was going to be and yeah. so uh, i'm happy you, with this one you definitely killed it bro definitely i'm, I'm i want to pull up i want to put one of my uh one of the channel members on the spot like one of my one of my guys on the spot real quick um he's out there he's watching but i want to pull up one of my favorite photos of him um that he's done um, when he he's good with storytelling, and what he did with Deadpool and yeah, Obi Wan, that's, that's freaking awesome. That's bro, amazing. It was it was phenomenal, and he's so. And then you know when he does the editing here, uh, Figurassic Park, by the way, like literally he kills it, bro. Like he kills the way I was looking at this one, and then it was the other one. This one right here was so funny, bro. Um, you had Deadpool who is like kind of shooken by what he sees, and it's like if you don't scroll, if you don't scroll over, you don't know what he's looking at, and then you get that, bro. <laughs> 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 That's <laughs> just evil. But, <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> like literally, but he's good at that. Like just again, angling, but at the same time, editing. Of course, he edited the photo. But it looks so, so, so good. You know, even what he actually did with this Gandalf. Um, yeah, absolutely uh, incredible. That looks incredible. And then it was another one. A figure that I, I was like, definitely, I'm never going to have in my collection. Two figures that I wasn't going to get. But I'm like, the way he did them together, it was genius. Like, to have that um, in here that way, it looks phenomenal. I'm like, yo, it's like, really, when you're trying to tell a story, I mean, there's no better way uh uh to do it than you know something like that so uh shout out to you my bro uh i just sorry i didn't mean to put you on the spot but you know i kind of i kind of had to uh when it comes to that now i want to ask you guys a question um you know just tips like you know nick i'm gonna start with you in a sense uh tips on what do you think you know because i you now what what camera like the camera that you basically use and uh, what would you tell people out there who are into photography? Like, what tips would you give them on, you know, how to, uh, you know, really, if, you know, if you're if you're wanting to actually capture certain, you know, angles, if you're looking to actually, you know, if you have an idea, uh, because you said you've only had your camera for a few months, but what you've done, you know, in a few months, people are still trying, you know, to do now. Mind you, I have to pull this up because you almost damn near sold me. Um, on this, um, you know, integrated soup, but I'm still not doing it. But you almost <laughs> sold me on it. I'm just letting you know that right now. You almost sold me on it. I just can't do the integrated. Um, but I what can't you... blame you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want it either originally. I didn't want it, but um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's great. <laughs> Yeah, so Funny what, how those what, figures just randomly show up in our collection, right? <laughs> like they just end up there, man. Like they just really end up. But um, what would you, what would your tips be, man? Um, hmm. Like I said, I've only had mine for a few months, so I don't have. I'll show you. I don't have like a really like high end camera. This is the Canon T7. So this is mm -hmm. like the um, I believe it's like a mid tier entry, or they consider it entry level. This guy right here. Mm -hmm. Here he is. Um, and I have I got the uh the pack that comes with um. 
It comes with the standard little lens, the, um, yeah. what is this? 18 to 55 millimeters. And then it has the, um, 75 to 300. Um, mm. mainly cause I heard, I heard from others that like using the 80 to 90 is good for portraits. Like I said, I'm yeah. not very good at portraits, so I'm still yeah. learning, but, um, 100%. I, I, I always use manual and mm -hmm. I just mess with the settings myself. That's what I would say. Uh, but like I said, I'm still learning. I think this is more Kiko's thing with the with the technicalities of it. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I just kind of go on manual and I mess around with all the settings, the ISO, the shutters and all that. And then um, what worked works. So I'm not very good tutorial wise yet. Uh, letting you guys know what to how to um, mess around. With it's it. it's not you know, it's not even just being good at it. It's just like you're like, you know, just your your niche like your tips on you know how you basically your your you know way of actually coming in how because people might even take ideas from it, you know mm -hmm. be like oh that's that that sounds pretty good yeah you know I mean? and also i'll show you the lights i use too because i have um there's one where's the other one right here i have these guys these are on amazon this is like 25 bucks mm -hmm. these guys these are like bootleg loom cubes which i think um kiko uses right kiko i think at least yeah. so yeah, yeah. Like these are yeah. yeah these are like a little alonzi that's what they're called they're like 25 bucks on amazon i have three of these little ones and then the other day i got the the bigger version this guy wow. right here um and you can uh little adjust it mm -hmm. if it'll turn on and then you can change the color you see so like right now it's green you got green yeah. and then you can you know up it and up the uh, brightness lower brightness you can have crazy little things like you can have a police siren and all that stuff or it like blinks and all that. Mm -hmm. So if you want cheap lights that like work, I would say go with the Alonzi's on um, Amazon. That's what I recommend. Um, yeah. That's right. that would be my recommendation there. And then, like I said, if you do want a camera, I would say go with the Canon T7. It's like the nice in between. It's not too cheap. It's not too expensive. I think it was like, yeah. uh, I think the two pack was like 600, 500, 550 or 600, something like that. Yeah yeah see that and it looks definitely good man because i'm for me again i'm still using that you know n50 um mm -hmm. you know I, i've been using the n50 for like the longest time bro uh but i you know even with the m50 like i haven't really dove in you know too much um on it um mm -hmm. you know but i i know i need to i know i need to 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 kind of you know really uh you know, get the angles to, to be able to get the and, and having the right lighting. Like we talk about that all the time. The right lighting um, is is really good. Before I go to you, Kiko, um, I want to bring up uh, uh, another one of my guys out there who, you know, really, really kills it with like a like a lot of close up shots um, and gives us like depth. And the lighting that he uses is, you know, really phenomenal as well. Um, that's my boy, Alan Six Scale Gallery. Um, he's out there, too. Uh, yes. I don't know if people. Yeah, he does a yeah, lot great. of great work. He's really like the lighting on the eyes. Like I know Kiko, you talk about this too. Um, you know, are you sharing really... his screen? Because I can't see it. Oh, hold up. Let me just pull it up. Let me let me pull it up. Let me. Pull as much it up. as I love Nick, I, that's all I see. Oop, 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 oop. Let me get this out of here really quick. I'm gonna share uh, uh, Alan's screen really quick. Sorry about that. I was so so doing my own thing, but let me yeah. just pull this. Yeah, this is the most screen time I've ever had. Yeah, Not yeah. Bad. Sorry about that, bro. Sorry about <laughs> yeah, that. That's all right. Let me pull this up real quick. Sorry about that. Um, I'm sharing the screen now. Here we go. So yeah, Alan, I wanted to pull his his work up. Um, really good. Um, you know, at you know some of the shots that he actually pulls off. Um, I like what he actually did. I'm gonna pull this other one up here really quick. Uh, one of the most recent that I actually not even recent because he's done this before. Um, but I still love it. It's the DX19 that he did with, um, yeah, I love this, bro. I, I, I love, you know, how he captured it. It's almost like ghostly, like. Yeah, um, it looks so looking, good. Yeah, it looks good. Um, and just the depth and um, just really, you know, panning in on the visual where you can just look at the head sculpt. Uh, I do like that, man. So he's definitely killing it there. But um, Kiko, I'm going to go to you, man. Like, what do you like any ideas like you know if you if you had to tell anybody um you know and what do you like you're you're just you know i'm I'm not trying to expose and give away everybody's techniques but like just you know tips on you know really really what cameras do you think you would recommend um lights that you would recommend as well and you know just letting people know that like you know what work you have to put in it you know really getting a good shot so the thing i would say is when i 
real quick plug for myself. So I want people when they see my stuff to know it's mine, essentially. So define yeah. what you want your stuff to look like. And yeah. I, I would say, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, the sincerest form of flattery, or I'm sorry, imitations, the sincerest form of flattery. A lot of my stuff came from Mr. Lee from BG Toy Art. You know, they do a lot of the color pop and accent color lighting. And I saw theirs. I'm like, that is kind of what I want mine to look like. So if you're wanting to do toy photography, find the accounts that you like and say, okay, how do I want to make mine look like this? Find the ones that you think look good and not saying copy them, but you know, pattern yourself. You got to have something to shoot for. It's kind of like, um, like if, if you're a weightlifter or a bodybuilder, you know, you say, Oh, I want to look like Arnold. Okay. Well, what did Arnold do to get there? You know, something like yeah, that. Yeah. So, and then find as many tutorials as you can. You know, one of the things that when I first started, I told you I was doing Marvel legends photography with my phone and mm -hmm. my buddy told me, he's like, you know, if you're looking to do a couple more better shots, you need a real camera. I'm like, yeah, okay, well, let me think about that. And I thought about it. And I was like, you know, this is a fun hobby. It's an escape. So mm -hmm. I'll invest in a camera. Does that mean you have to have an actual, you know, point and shoot camera? No. But if you want to get certain aspects from it, you do. And mm -hmm. you have to kind of weigh that and say, okay, how serious do I want to be about it? And yeah, as Nick yeah. said, there's a lot of good middle of the road options or cheaper options. Or if you want to ball out, I mean, go and get, you know, a, a red camera. Uh, I think cinema toy photog cinema toy photographer does, has one of those uh, red five cameras or whatever you want to call them. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the best things is that I literally walked into Best Buy before I bought mine. I walked into Best Buy and was like, "Hey, do you see this right here? This is a picture of a toy. Um, it's about about this big. I want to take a picture <laughs> like this. How do I do that?" And I went to the photographer section. I was like, "How do I do that? What camera and what lens do I need to do that?" Yeah. And they helped me pick one out essentially. And they kind of showed me the user interface. Someone was talking about it in the chat, and they said, "Do you want Nikon? Or do you want Sony? Depends on what user interface that you like. Is there a?" It depends on what feels good in your hand and how you can access the buttons and such like that. It's an art form. And someone, yeah. uh, I, I think I was, like I said, I was talking to uh, Knight of Ren. I said, I'm still trying to learn my camera. I'm still trying yeah. to learn new things. Always be learning. Always figure out new techniques that are going to work for you. But talk to the people that have done it a long time and figure out, yeah. hey, what are you doing? What doesn't mm -hmm. work? And, you know, that's where I figured out about lighting is that I was on a video shoot one time for work yeah. and I was figuring out like when they were doing these interviews, they're like, hey, you know, if you're going to do this, you know, put a light here, here and here. I'm like, hmm, that makes sense. I wonder if it translates to figures. And what do you know? Yeah. It does. It does. Um, so that's what yeah. I'd say. Find your style. Try to find somebody that you want to kind of emulate and work towards that and just don't be afraid to mess up and put stuff out there because you can always delete it later, you know, get, get some True. feedback, you know, That's and I, there's been plenty that I've deleted. Like I said, that Hunter picture. And I said, you know what? I can do better than that. And, um, you know, it's, it's not too serious at the end of the day, you know, this isn't your job. So to have fun with it, you know, yeah. don't let it stress you out. And that's one thing that I need to really tell myself is that, you know, I got a family, I got a job, I got things I need to worry about. I don't need to put out content. And if you have noticed, I've not put out a video in like a month and a half on my YouTube channel because yeah. I just got other things I got to do right now. And, yeah. you know, it's not that serious. And Your con the content that you put out on Instagram, bro, is like, I appreciate like that. I'm looking at this Luke, bro. And I'm you, Kiko, you make me so glad that I have these figures, bro. Like I literally I stole this and went back and got it because I like, <laughs> bro. I love this piece, bro. I, I, I have it. It's, it's still in my collection. I have him. I have, uh, the the uh, um, Leia as well from um, the Last Jedi, bro. Like I love them. I love just basically, and I and, and I'm never giving them up. That I have the crate Luke as well. I'm not giving that up. Um, but you make me so happy that I actually have these pieces. And it's like when I look at everybody's collection, like Nick, I cannot wait because I know you're getting. I know you are getting that final suit that we actually saw from No Way Home. Oh, of course. Um, and I know both of you guys are going to get that suit, and I can't wait to see. Uh, what is going to be done because it, it's just going to be so funny and i think that's you know and i, I was just sitting up here kiko i was laughing my ass off because i could imagine you walking to best buy and be like yeah i just want to take a picture of this figure and i have them probably look at the figure he was like yeah it's a figure so what and? <laughs> you know? and, and and that's the other thing is don't take yourself too serious i mean yeah we're collectors that play with toys most likely yeah. we're, we're adults that play yeah. with toys. and oh yeah think about that when you actually say that out loud 
this stuff isn't that serious, y'all. No. There's more important things in life. But I always tell people, I always, I always go around saying, like, yeah, I take photos of dolls. I love it. Yeah, I, that's why I always <laughs> say. In my, in my handle, it says, a big kid playing with toys. Yeah, and that's, that's what I it. Have. That's have it. It doesn't have to be serious, bro. Like, just have fun with it. And that's what we do, bro. Like, that's the thing is, and I'm learning. I learn. When I look at you guys and I look at your photos, I'm learning from it. I'm learning from people like you. I'm learning from Kiko, Nick, Nick, uh, Figure Asset Park. I'm learning from, you know, uh, uh, um, everybody who's actually out there taking photos, Commander Green. Um, you know, everybody. And, and the thing is, it's like, all right, so I'm just going to let everybody out there and it out there know. Knights of Ring, you too, everybody. Uh, Empire Strikes Again, everybody. When you put photos in Figure Flex Friday, it's not just because, yes, you are showcasing your, you're showcasing your talent and I'm putting you out there. But I'm learning from you guys. I'm stealing techniques from you guys. I'm not ashamed to say it because I'm trying to get better. So thank you for making me better. So, I mean, and that's what the thing is. That's what we, we all do. We share ideas. And that's just the best part about it, man. So thank you guys, man. Dockinator 2. Dockinator, my guy. And Dockinator, what he's, what he's good at. As a matter of fact, really quick, before before uh, uh, we go, because I, I want to pull up some of the stuff that it, one of the pictures that he did last week uh, that he actually showed, bro, um, it, it's because, you know, it's him when you when you when you see his photos, you know, it's Dockinator, you know, it's his actual photos, one that he just put up just now. That he was like, yo, I'm going to make you get. And it's crazy because I was looking at this figure and I was like, yo, for the longest time, I don't know why I didn't get it. He puts it up and I'm like, you bastard. Now I have to go back and get it. I've been looking at this Seek Wolf for the longest time. Um, it is the uh, character from the Wolverine movie itself. And I was looking at it. I was like, yes, I want to have it. And yes, he is selling me on it. He said, I'm going to make you get it. You don't have to worry about it. I am going to get it. But what I like about Dockinator's photos, there's a few of them that I actually have that I want to, I kind of want to pull up here is the simple fact that he has, he, he always, his background in a sense matches his, uh, you know, it matches the photo. Like it matches the character that he's really pulling up. Like he always has the colors in the background to match. And that's what I think is great. Um, I love when he actually does it. I'm just trying to find a few of them here. Um, even Mafia. I saw this one from Mafia. Mafia killed this one. Um, uh, this was basically from uh, Stranger Things. You know, he did it's the 3011 uh, and how he did that was phenomenal. It's like just so fun to see this stuff. Uh, but here, here it is. Here's, this is the one I was talking about from the Dockinator. Like he gave us this particular photo of Mysterio. And I love how the colors blend in. You have the greens, you have the purples, you have everything that he's actually featuring yeah. in with this particular character. And I love that. I love the way that everybody has their own niche and how they yeah. do it. And that's highly what I recommend if you're a question about colors is pull up the compare contrast of colors that work together. Just Google that mm -hmm. and you can find out that these colors go together and you can, you know, essentially make something very aesthetically pleasing. And so obviously that, yeah. goes, that goes together real well. That's cool. Yeah, man, definitely, man. Um, yeah, man, but I appreciate it, guys. Thank you for coming on the Kiko. I told you I was going to make this short, bro. It was going to be a long show. It's lunchtime I got for food you, bro. Downstairs. I can smell it. Exactly. So I wanted to make a short show. Uh, but thank you guys it, for actually coming on. Kiko, tell them what you got coming up, bro. One day, I will eventually put out some content on YouTube. I am talking about the ups and downs of collecting. I got the whole thing, the points written out. I just need to actually sit behind a camera and do it. So that's coming to the YouTube channel. We're over... I think we're like at 5,500 now on YouTube. So that's cool. Um, but Instagram is where a lot of the stuff's been happening. Once the next, you know, figure releases, we'll probably do something with that. But I've been trying to do these reels because apparently that's what Instagram wants to do. And yeah. they've actually done really well. I get like 20,000 views or whatever on, on a reel. Um, and if you are out there, here's your free reel tip. Find a trending sound and work with that because that's how you yeah. kick it off with reels. So find the trending sound. And you'll be amazed your reach on that. So gotcha. make sure to check me out, Kiko Collects, on YouTube and Instagram. And uh, Leo, I appreciate it, man. I always appreciate you and uh, the invitation to come and working around my schedule today. Thank hell yeah, you. hell yeah! I, now that I know your schedule, I'm like, okay, now I can work with him on this schedule. So that's cool. Always cool, bro. So thank you for being here. I appreciate that, Nick. Tell him what's going on with you, bro. Uh, also appreciate being here. I love being here and talking figures and especially toy photography. I was very honored to be here with Kiko and you and everybody in the chat. There's so many great photographers in the chat right now. So it's really awesome to be here. Um, content wise, 
my Instagram, as usual, is my source of content. We just hit 900 followers, so we're getting close yeah, to the 1K. Let's go, that's gonna be let's cool. Go. So that's yeah. going to be cool. Um, I'm doing a lot of um, Chrome Mando photos and a lot of Integrated 2 photos recently. Those are the two figures I picked up, um, and they are both amazing. And um, the photos, I've been absolutely loving with them, so keep an eye on that. I've also been doing some reels, too. I've been trying to get some of those in because the algorithm is busted, and man, oh, man, do those things get views when you put some trending, uh, like Kiko said, you put a trending thing on there, it's It's busted. amazing. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Um yeah. And same, same on my YouTube. I do have a YouTube. Um, it, it's me. I put shorts on there. Uh, maybe one day I'll put videos or something, but um, you can follow that if you'd like. But um, yeah, appreciate being here. Man, thank you for being here, bro. Thank you for the tips. Uh, you guys, again, um, I had to have you on here because, again, having one of these shows, it's probably like one of the most, you know, the, the, the best shows that I actually have is when I'm talking about figure photography because, like I said, I know this is what we do this for. Um, you know, it's not just about having a, a beautiful figure in your display, but just having it, you know, uh, being able to take these photos and just play around with different angles and capture different moments. Um, that's the fun part and I'm learning and, and, and definitely now I need to spend more time with this N50, uh, which my beautiful, beautiful, beautiful girlfriend got me this, uh, for Christmas. Um, you know, actually it was for my birthday. Um, and, and, I, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, she's always spoiling me, bro. That's how it is. You got to have a woman who spoils you, bro. It's definitely, the way it right. is, man. you already know that's right, man. Definitely happy, happy wife, happy life, bro. That's just how it is. And sometimes when you do that, they repay you. So that's just how it's it is. Amazing. Man. It's amazing. And hell yeah, it is, man. But anyway, thank you guys for basically being here. What do I got coming up? Comic book talk with friends tomorrow. I'm not streaming tonight um, at all. Super Bowl. I want to actually watch the trailers, you know, so I'm probably going to do what Kiko does and just watch them online since neither of my teams are playing. Um, uh, and yeah, so we got comic book talk with friends tomorrow. Say what Wednesday, uh, Uncivilized Scandals on Mario's channel, and then back for Figure Flex Friday next Friday. Congratulations to the winner of that Iron Man Origins figure. Um, so definitely, um, congrats. We're still actually engaging in Flex War, so there'll be another giveaway coming up pretty soon. Uh, so thank you guys for being here again. Have a nice, nice Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening, whatever you basically do. Hey, just be positive. Like Kiko said, don't take yourself too serious, man. It's all Absolutely about collecting his figures. Everything is just cool, man. Just enjoy what you do and, and just keep it in the realm of collecting and all the drama. Just cash that out. Anyway, love y'all. Peace out. Let's go.